Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to do some stoichiometric calculations. So when you have a chemical reaction, stoichiometry there would be the relationship between the quantities of the reactants and products. So for example, if you have H2 plus O2 to give us 2H2O, so this would be the balanced equation. The relationship between hydrogen and oxygen, this stoichiometric relationship would be two to one ratio. Okay, so these two here, and of course there is one here, which we don't usually write out when it's one. And then the relationship between oxygen and water here is gonna be one to two ratio. So when we talk about the stoichiometric relationship, this is what we mean. So using this relationship, you can convert grams of hydrogen to grams of oxygen or the moles of hydrogen to moles of oxygen and so on. And that is what we're gonna be learning in this video. So the first question I have is this. And the question says, how many moles of hydrogen is required to produce 5.5 mole of hydrogen iodide according to the following equation? So you are to start with the number of mole that they give you. The 5.5 mole of hydrogen iodide, okay? Now, since this is already in mole, you do not need to convert. So the next step would just be to go from mole of hydrogen iodide to the mole of hydrogen. We have hydrogen here and we have hydrogen iodide. The relationship between these two is one to two ratio. Since the question is how many moles of hydrogen, we are gonna write one mole of hydrogen on top. That has to be on top. And then divide that by the mole of hydrogen iodide. We can see this too, okay? So you must always make sure that these two moles are on opposite sides so they can cancel out. Would then be the 5.5 times one, which will end up being the same thing, divided by two. And the final answer is 2.75 mole. So since what they gave us is 5.5, that is two significant figures. Your answer should be 2.8 moles approximately. The next question says, how much of oxygen in gram is needed to react with 3.75 mole of methane gas according to the following equation? Now note, this is methane, all right? And they gave us this particular value. And the question is how much of this in grams? So we're going from mole to gram. The last one we just saw, we went from mole to mole. So we will start with the value given to us, 3.75 mole CH4, all right? And now the next step is to use the stoichiometric relationship to convert to the mole of oxygen. We have two moles of oxygen according to this equation. All right. Now against one mole of methane, since this is empty means one, okay? So one mole of methane, cancel out the moles of methane. You need them to be on the opposite side so they can cancel out. We need to move this to grams. The next step is to calculate what we call molar mass, all right? The molar mass of oxygen, oxygen is a diatomic element, which means it exists as two. Therefore, you're going to say there are two oxygen times the mass, the atomic mass of oxygen in the periodic table, which is 16. Now, this times this would give us 32 grams per mole. Okay, so therefore, you're going to say times 32 grams per one mole. Okay, that per mole is the same as one mole. And this is for oxygen. So the more oxygens are on the opposite side and will cancel out. So now all you need to do is to calculate. You have 3.75, multiply that by two, multiply by 32, then divide. Of course, this is just over one. So there's no need to divide, right? So your final answer is going to be 240 
grams of oxygen. Again, if you're looking at the significant figures, your answer should be in three significant figures because you have 3.75 mole. That is three six fig. So therefore, put a dot after this, okay? So without the decimal point, that is two significant figures. So to make it three significant figures, you put a dot immediately after the last zero. And that is your final answer. So the next thing for us to calculate would then be gram to mole. So you have how many moles of methane is needed to produce 21.1 grams of water. So this time, they want us to convert these grams to mole. Now we have done mole to mole, we have done mole to grams. Now we are going grams to mole. You cannot go from grams to moles of methane, grams of H2O to moles of methane directly. What you have to do is convert these grams of H2O to moles of H2O before you can do any other thing. And to do that, we need the molar mass of H2O, okay? So the molar mass of H2O, hydrogen, you have two of them. Now you don't have to worry about this number for now, just the main compound. These numbers are just um, coefficient. They are the, what we use to balance the equation. They are not part of the compound itself. So this compound is H2O, not 2H2O. So the H2O is what we will use for our molar mass. We have two hydrogen and one oxygen. Hydrogen, the mass of hydrogen in the periodic table is 1.008. That of oxygen is 16. So if you multiply this, it gives us 2.016, and this gives us 16, and then add them up, that gives us 18.016 grams per mole. And this is what we call the molar mass or the molecular mass of H2O. Note how this is grams over mole, right? We want the mole. So you're going to kind of turn that upside down. Let the mole be on top, okay? So that the mass is below. Now, why do I do this? Because what we want to do is convert to mole. So you're going to then put the one mole on top and the mass below. Now note, the key thing here is you want these two guys to be on the opposite side of each other, the grams, so they could cancel out. If you put grams on top, they won't cancel out and you're converting to grams, which doesn't make sense. You're going from grams to grams of H2O, right? But we wanna go from grams to moles of H2O. And that's why we have to like turn that upside down, okay? So you put the mole on top and the grams under. And this is what you have. So therefore, when you cancel out these grams, you have the most of H2O, right? So the next step would then be, now that we have converted to the most of H2O, is to convert to the moles of methane. That, that's the question. It says, how many moles of methane? So therefore, you're going to look at their stoichiometric relationship. There is one mole of methane against two moles of H2O. And since the question is the moles of methane, the one mole methane would be on top and the two moles of H2O would, would be down here, right? So now the two moles H2O are on the opposite side of each other. They are gonna cancel out and you have moles of CH4. And that's where you stop because this question says moles of methane. If this were to be grams, then we would go one step further. And that would be in the next question, okay? So now we do 21.2 times one times one is gonna give us the same thing. And then divide by open parenthesis, 18.016 times two, close your parenthesis. So your answer would then be 0 0.588 moles of methane. Next one here, it's gram to gram. So the question says, what is the theoretical yield of ammonium chloride if 2.69 grams of HCl reacts with excess ammonia? Now, theoretical yield is the same thing as saying the mass of ammonium chloride produced, right? They are the same thing. 
I'm going to be explaining theoretical and actual yield in another video where I will teach you about percent yield, okay? Now, they gave us 2.69 grams of HCL. See this? So pick that up first. Now, again, we can't go from grams directly to grams. We have to go through two different steps before the last part. So the first thing you do is convert these grams to moles of HCl. And to do that, you need the molar mass of HCl, which is the mass of hydrogen times one, because you have just one hydrogen in that compound, and the mass of chlorine times one as well. So they are both one, one. Now add them together. Since they're multiplying one anyway, they're gonna be the same thing exactly, right? So if you add this together, it's gonna give us 36.458 grams per mole. Okay, so again, you have a grams per one mole, the same thing like the mass here then over one mole, right? I want the moles, I want the moles and not the grams. So I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm gonna put the mole on top. So one mole HCl over 36.458 grams HCl, okay? And that is, remember, the one that you want will always be on top. We want the mole, the mole go on top, the grams go below, okay? So the two grams here would cancel because they are opposite of each other. And the next step would then be to go from the mole of HCl to the mole of ammonium chloride. And this is ammonium chloride right here. Now, there is one mole of ammonium chloride against one mole of the HCl as well. The mole hydrogen chloride will cancel out. Then the next step, you do not stop here because the question is, what is the theoretical yield? And I mentioned earlier that theoretical yield is the same as amount in grams or the mass, which is always in grams as well. So you're going to have to multiply by the molar mass of ammonium chloride, which we will calculate. You have one nitrogen and that is times 14.01, which is the mass of nitrogen in the periodic table. We have hydrogen, and that is four, four of them in the compound. So we're looking at this, and that would be 1.008. We have chlorine, there are one of them, and you multiply by 35.45. So if you add all this up, we would have 14.01 plus 4.032 plus 35.45. That gives us a 53.492 grams per mole. And that's your molar mass of ammonium chloride. So since we want the grams, this time you don't have to turn it upside down because it's the grams we want. And because it's the grams, it goes exactly as it is, that it's 53.492 grams of NH4Cl all over one mole of NH4Cl, okay? Now the moles NH4Cl we cancel out. And the final answer here would be 2.69 multiplied by one by one gives us the same times 53.492. Then divide that by 36.458 multiplied by one will give us the same thing. So just go ahead and divide by 36.458. And that gives us a 3.95 grams of ammonium chloride. Okay, and that's your final answer. And the significant figure is perfect too. It's just three significant figure based on what you were given. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has helped you to understand how to do stoichiometric calculations. I'll be doing another video on how to solve stoichiometry that is related to limiting reactant, SS reactant, and also actual yield. So look out for that video and do have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.